so hello this is the take two of uh, module 12 because i already have the video for this as you can see we have 50 minutes 50 minute video here but unfor unfortunately we don't have the audio uh, so just need to repeat this discussion so module 12 WLAN concepts okay so the objective of this module is explain how WLANs enable network connectivity uh, here are several topics we have the introduction to wireless so you need to describe WLAN technology and standards the components of WLANs, WLAN operation, so to explain how wireless technology enables WLAN operation, the cap of operation, channel management, WLAN, WLAN threats, and secure WLANs. Okay. Okay, so first one is benefits of wireless. So it makes mobility possible within homes and businesses also promote uh, cost, cost, cost savings anytime equipment changes, relocating an employee with no building, reorganizing equipment or a lab, or moving to a temporal, temporal locations or project sites. <coughs> so wireless infrastructure can adapt to rapidly changing needs and technologies. So we have types of wireless networks. So these are based on the range or size. So the first one is the WPAN or wireless personal area networks. So it uses low power transmitters for short range networks. So it's usually 20 to 30 feet. Okay, Bluetooth and Zigbee based devices are commonly used in uh, wireless personal area networks. Next is WLAN. <coughs> so uses transmitters to cover medium sized networks usually up to 300 feet. So it is suitable for use in a home office and even campus environment. So these are based on 802.11 standard and are 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz radio frequency. Next is WMAN. So it's larger than WLAN. So it covers a larger geographic area. So it's suitable for providing wireless access to metropolitan city or specific districts. <coughs> so it uses specified license frequency. Last is the WLAN, so wireless wide area ne networks. So uses transmitters to provide coverage over an extensive geographic area. Suitable for national and global con communications. Now for the wireless technologies we have four here. We have the first the Bluetooth, the WiMAX, cellular broadband, and satellite broadband. So Bluetooth is, so the keyword here is the device pair process to communicate over distance to 100 meters. <coughs> we have two types of Bluetooth radios. First one is the BLE, the Bluetooth Low Energy, and Bluetooth Basic Rate Enhanced Rate. Okay, so the BLE is, uh, this supports multiple network technologies including mesh net topology to large scale network devices. Uh, the uh, second one is supports point-to-point -point topologies and is optimized for audio streaming. So this is for the mesh topology and this one is point-to-point -point topology. Now for the WiMAX or worldwide interoperability, interoperability for microwave access, so it's an alternative to broadband wide internet connections competing with DSL and cable. So it operates similar to Wi-Fi, but at higher speeds over great distances and great number of users. <coughs> okay, this is the cell phone. Uh, my WiMAX towers. Okay. Now we have the cellular broadband. So it's used uh, mostly for mobile networks, uh, mostly on cellular phones. Okay, let's see. So we have the 4G oh, it's cellular broadband, so cell phone. Satellite broadband so provides network access to remote sites through the use of directional satellite dish that is aligned with specifics. Geos <coughs> stationary Earth orbit satellite. So now this uses the satellite on uh, outer space. So 802.11 standards, 
who have different uh, WLAN standards. Okay. We have the newer standards that transmit and receive at higher speed rates require access points. We have various implementations of IEEE 802.11 standard. Okay, we have the first one is the 802.11. It operates with in 2.4 GHz. Then it speeds up to 2 Mbps. It's too slow compared to now. We have 11A, so 5 GHz, 11B, 11G, 11N, it's operated with both this uh, frequency band. The AC, okay. the AX, the latest one, okay. released in 2019, so it provides higher data rates, increased capacity, handles many connected devices, and improved power efficiency. So radio frequencies. Okay, all wireless devices operate in the radio waves range of the electromagnetic spectrum. So WLAN networks operate in the 2.4 GHz frequency band and the 5 GHz band. Okay, all these devices have transmitters and receivers tuned to specific frequencies of the radio waves range as shown in the figure. So we have here the electromagnetic spectrum. Radio waves and uh, oh, infrared. I think this is the 5 gigahertz, 2.4 to 5 gigahertz bands. So all these devices operates within that range. Okay. Now we have the wireless standards organizations. We have the ITU that regulates the allocation of radio frequency spectrum satellite orbits through the ITUR. These are the organizations, International Telecommunication Union. Now for the IEEE, so it specifies how a radio frequency is modulated to carry information. It also maintains the standards for local and metropolitan area networks. We also have the DAP, Wi-Fi Alliance. So it's a global non-profit industry with trade association devoted to promoting the growth and acceptance of the blue lines. Okay. So understanding. So which of the following wireless networks typically uses lower power transmitters for short radius? We have the double pan. Which the following wireless networks are specified in the IEEE? Standards for 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz radio frequencies. We have the WLAN. So following in the users device pair process to communicate uh, Bluetooth. <coughs> Which are the standards exclusively use the 5 GHz radio frequency. We have a 11A and 11AC. So which standards Organization is responsible for allocating radio frequencies. We have the radio frequency ITUR. Okay, next. We have components. So we have wireless NICs or network interface cards. So wireless deployment requires a minimum of two devices that have radio transmitter and radio receiver tuned to same radio frequencies. So radio frequencies, whether it's uh, 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz. Okay, we have end devices with wireless NICs, network interface cards, or a network device such as a wireless router or a wireless AP. So we connect our devices into this uh, wireless router or wireless access points. So however, if a device does not have an integrated wireless NIC, then a USB wireless adapter can be used. Here, just need to connect that to our laptops. If ever that the laptop don't have a wireless mix, so the wireless home router. Okay, so it typically interconnects wireless devices using. Uh, okay. So the wireless router serves as an access point switch and router. 
access point so it provides wireless access switch so it's provide uh, four ports to interconnect wire devices router is uh, provides our default gateway for connecting to other network infrastructures infrastructures such as the internet and so this is the example for the router <coughs> so wireless access points Hours, access points. So it's just a device for which provides uh, wireless access. It's the same with the home router, but does not provide the uh, like a switch or a router. So IP categories we have. Two types of access points. So here, the autonomous APs and controller-based APs. So the main difference between these two is the autonomous APs are uh, we need to configure it, and the uh, each of autonomous APs must be uh, configured. So it is useful in situations where only a couple of APs are required in the organization. So for controller based APs, so all of the configuration for all the access points are uh, in the WLC or wireless LAN controller. Okay, it's useful where, uh, where many APs are required in the network. So all the configuration is on the wireless LAN controller. Wireless antennas, we have omnidirectional, directional, and MIMO. So in the om omnidirectional, so it provides 360 degree coverage in RDL. It provides 360 degree coverage. It's ideal in houses, open office areas, conference rooms, and outside areas. So for the direct directional, so the signal uh, focal focuses only on a single direction. Okay. So it enhances the signal to and from the access points in that direction. The antenna is pointing. Provides a stronger signal strength in one direction. We also have the MIMO, or multiple input, multiple output, which uses multiple antennas to increase available bandwidth. So you can see we have here four antennas. So true or false, laptops that do not have integrated wireless link can only be attached to the network through a wired connection. So it's false. You can use a USB wireless adapter. Which the following components are integrated in a wireless home router. We have access points, switch, and router. So true or false, when you need to expand the coverage of small network, the best solution is to use range extender. So it's false, you can use the access points. Which the following is a standalone device like a home router, where the entire WLAN configuration resides on the device. Uh, the autonomous AP. Okay. So follow provide 360 degrees of coverage. We have the omnidirectional. Heading to the WN operation, we have different types of wireless topology mode. We have the ad hoc mode, infrastructure mode, and tethering. So uh, the ad hoc mode is when two devices connect wirelessly in peer-to-peer -peer manner without using APs or wireless router. Okay, so I see we have here two devices uh, connected so without the use of access points or, or home router. So infrastructure mode is when we use the access points uh, or home router. Okay. So wireless clients interconnect via a wireless router or access points. Okay. So for tethering is it's a variation of ad hoc topology. So when a smartphone or tablet with cellular data access is enabled to create a personal hotspot. Okay. So as you can see here, we have the mobile device here connected to the internet. So it's enabled its our hotspot. So now uh, these devices are tethered. So BSS and ESS. So infrastructure mode defines two topology building blocks. So we have the BSS and the SS. So 
the BSS is consists of single AP interconnecting all associated wireless clients. So if you specify a single access point connecting uh, connected with these devices. So for the SS is two or more RBSS are connected or can, or can be joined through a common distribution system. Okay, into the SS. So BSS single access point. BSS is uh, two or more BSS combined. So it auto that eleven frame structure. It's the same with the Ethernet frame format, except that it con contains more fields shown in the figure. We have the header. Uh, the header contains frame control, duration, three addresses, sec sequence control, and address form. Also, the payload, so it's the data, the FCS or frame check sequence. So, in frame control, it ad identifies the type of wireless frame and contains subfields for protocol version. Frame type, adjust type, power management, and security settings. So that's we have the frame control. So duration is so it begins the remaining duration needed to receive the next frame transmission. Also have the three addresses. So the MAC address of the receiving uh, device, transmitting wireless device. Then for the address three is the address of the destination or the default gateway. Sequence control, address four, the payload or the data. FCS and is for layer 2 air control. We also have the CC CSMA slash CA. So it's used to avoid collision it's because WLANs uh, operates in half duplex and the wireless clients operates in uh, full duplex. So there might be a collision. So this uh, care sends multiple access with collision avoidance. So it's a method to determine how and when to send data on the network. So have the wireless client and AP association. So these are the process in uh, associating with AP. So first one is we need to discover the SSID of AP or access points. Also after that we need to authenticate. So we use passwords. Then the final is the last step is associating with access points or wireless router. So have the SSID or the name of uh, available wireless networks on a client, the password, network mode. So it refers to the standards of wireless net local area network. Also the security mode, so, and whether it's a uh, web, WPA or WPA2, and channel settings. So which uh, frequency band is used to transmit wireless data. Also have the passive and active discovery mode. So in the passive mode is the access points uh, advertises its uh, service, while the active is does that uh, advertises its uh, service. So for example, you have here in passive mode. So the AP provides its SSID name. So it's, uh, broadcasts broadcasts its beacon. So the beacon contains the SSID name of access point, the supported, supported standards and security settings. So in active mode is the wireless client must know the SSID name and supported standards. Okay, which wireless topology is used by two devices to connect in a peer-to-peer -peer network? We have the ad hoc. So an SS created when two more BSS need to be joined to support room clients. So my address is fields and the one is frame. We have four open the ad open advertises. So we have passive. So an access point does not send a beacon. We have the active. So CAPPAP is just it's just a protocol for which enables a wireless link controller to manage multiple APs and double LANs. It's also responsible for encapsulation forwarding of WLAN client traffic between an access point and wireless LAN controller. Also have the speed map architecture. So it's the concept of so which all the functions are really performed by individual access points and distribute them between two functional components. We have the 
here the access point MAC functions and WLC MAC functions. So these are the functions for the AP. So it sends beacons and pro probe responses, packets, uh, acknowledgement responses, red transmissions, frame queuing and packet prioritization, and MAC layer data encryption and encryption. And for the WLC, we have the authentication and these functions here. So DTLS encryption, so it's protocol which provides security between the AP and WLC. So it allows them to communicate using encryption and prevents eavesdropping, eavesdropping or tampering. So this is the DTLS encryption data, datagram, what is datagram transport layer security. So we have the also the Flex Connect APs. So it's a solution for branch office and remote office deployments. So let's reconfigure and control access points in the branch office from the corporate office through a one link. So without deploying a controller in each office. So it's okay. We have two modes of operation of the Flex Connect AP. First one is we have the connected mode. So the wireless and controller is reachable. So the AP has cup of connectivity with its uh, wireless and controller and can send traffic through the cup of tank. The WLC performs all its cap up functions. So in standalone mode is the WLC is unreachable. Now the access points does all the WLC functions. So locally and performing client authentication locally. So what IP versions does cap support? We have IPv4 by default, but can configure IPv6. So what UDP ports and IP protocols in the framework are used by IPv4. We have 17 for uh, IP protocol for IPv4 and the UDP ports of 5246 and 5247. So for IPv6, we have 136 and this also these two UDP ports. So in split MAC architecture for a cup up, which is the following are the responsibility of the AP. We have the packets, runs for errors. Transmissions, because for responses, data encryption, and frame tuning and packet prioritization. So now for number five, responsibility of the WLC, we have the authentication, frame clients, termination, and frame translation. So DTLS is enabled by default on the control and data. So it's just uh, enabled by default on control traffic but in data traffic is no so following statements are true about modes of operation for a flex connect AP so in a standalone the WLC is unreachable okay. connect mode is uh, connect this For channel management is we have the frequency channel saturation so all devices are tuned in to a uh, specific radio waves to communicate okay, we have here three types of uh, we have here the frequency channel saturation techniques so we have the DSSS so the sequence spread spectrum so we decide to spread the signal over a large frequency band so as you can see here we have here the original signal then now the signal is spread this as a signal right so for the larger frequency also have the fhss it relies on sped spectrum methods to communicate it transmits radio signals by rapidly switching per signal among many frequency channels so with the FHSS, the sender and receiver must be synchronized to know which channel to jump to. So they are jumping through different channels. So OFDM is subset of frequency division multiplexing in which a single channel uses multiple subchannels to adjacent frequencies. So here the channel. So for example, we have the channel here. This six channels and single. In each channel, we have uh, sub-channels. Right. So 
the new 802.11ax uses a variation of OFDM called Orthogonal Frequency Division Multi-Axis or OFDME. So channel selections, so we just need to choose a channel that's not overlaps. So for example here we have a 2.4 GHz overlapping channels in North America. We have the 1, 6, and 11. We have 22 megahertz for, for each channel and uh, in each channel we have 5 meg megahertz uh, in between. So best practice for wireless the local requirements require multiple APs is to use non-overlapping channels. Overlapping channels for 802.11 BGN, we have channel 1, channel 6, and channel 11. For gigahertz, we have the 36, 48, and 60. So they're, they're not overlapping. 36, 48, 60. So plan a double LAN deployment. So the number of users supported by double LAN depends on the geographical layout of the facility, so including the number of bodies and devices that can fit in space. So the data rates user expect, the use of non-overlapping channels by multiple APs and yes, and transmit power settings. So in planning the location of access points to approximate circular coverage area is important. So as you can see here, we have here the X mark, so it's the access point and its coverage. We also have the uh, recommendations in implementing the APs or uh, planning the location of APs in a uh, place. So we have the APs. So if APs are to use existing wiring or if there are locations where APs cannot be placed, so we just uh, we need to note these locations on the map. We also need to note all potential sources of interference, interference which can include microwave ovens, Wireless video cameras, wireless lights, motion detectors, or any other device that uses the 2.4 GHz range. So the wireless devices that operates 2.4 GHz range, so it's prone for interference because other wireless uh, devices or devices like micro ovens, so it operates with 2.4 GHz range. We also need to position the access points above obstructions. Or, uh, and vertically near the ceiling or in the center of each coverage area. Okay, you need also to position the access points in locations where users are expected to be. Okay. So we just to follow modulation techniques, rapidly switches, signal, frequency, and the FHSS. So it spreads the signal over a larger frequency band, we have the SSS used in the new 802.11ax so we have the variation of AFDMA Togona frequency distribution so how many channels are available for the 2.4 GHz band in Europe we have 13 and channels are available for 5 GHz band we have 24 okay. check WLAN threads so also the wireless LAN it's also prone for attacks. So wireless networks are specifically susceptible, susceptible to several threats. So we have the interception of data, wireless intruders, the DOS attack, the uh, service, and rogue APs. So DOS attacks can be a result of improperly configured devices. So malicious user intentionally interfering with the wireless communication and accidental interference. Also, of the wrong access points. So these are the access points that are connected to a corporate network without explicit authorization and against corporate policy. So it's a rogue access points. Okay, we have also the man in the middle attack. So the hacker is positioned in between two legitimate entities in order to read or modify the data that passes between two parties. So popular wireless MITM attack is the evil twin attack, AP attack. So when, when an attacker introduces a rogue AP and configures it with the same SSID as the legitimate AP. 
as I showed the figure. We have here the attacker, we have the SSID bug, lab day. So it's also the same with the uh, legitimate access point or router. So it's advertises its service and then all the data that the user I sent with this access point so also the sent sent with with <coughs> legitimate access points. So the access point will now reply and then all the data traffic will be uh, forwarded to users. So now the hacker can be can steal the user's passwords, personal information and gain access to their device or the access system. So which is the following is most likely not the source of registers attacks. We have the rogue AP. So rogue AP is misconfigured, AP connected to the network and possible source now false. Which type of attack is an evil twin attack, so it's a man in the middle attack. So have now the secure WLANs. We have the SSID cloaking and MAC address filtering. So in SSID cloaking, we just disable the uh, we just disable the broadcasting of SSID beacon frames. Okay. So the wireless client must know the SSID name and the network uh, security. I think. We also have the MAC address filtering. So we filter the MAC addresses of the device. So as you can see here, we have these two MAC addresses, so meaning this, the devices owning these MAC addresses, uh, they are the only ones that can access the wireless router or the services of wireless access points. So we also have the original authentication methods. We have the open system authentication and shared key authentication. The main difference is in open authentication, there is no password required and the client can associate. So it's, it's typically used to provide free internet access in public areas. So client has full responsibility for security. So the client may use the virtual private network. We also have the shared key. We have different types of shared key here. We have the WEP, WPA2, and 3. I have the authentication methods of the web. So it uses the reverse cipher for encryption method with static key. So however, the key never changes when exchanging packets. So this makes it easy to hack. So it's no longer recommended and should never be used. So the next one is the WPA or Wi-Fi protected access. It secures the data with much stronger temporal key integrate integrity protocol or TTIP encryption encryption algorithm. It changes the key for each packet, make it, making it much more difficult to hack. Also have the WPA2. So it's currently the considered the strongest encryption protocol. Also uses the AES4 encryption, the advanced encry encryption standard. The so WPA3, so the next generation of fiber security. So however, devices with WPA3 are not yet readily available. So authenticating a home user, we have the personal and personal and enterprise. So personal is so it's intended it's intended for home or small office networks. So they authenticate using pre shared key. So meaning the wireless clients same uh, uses the same password. The enterprise is so it's intended for ex enterprise networks. So it also requires the radio server. Okay. The users have each have their own uh, username and passwords for authentication. So encryption method. So double PA. Okay. okay. So encryption methods. We have the TKIP and AES. So the main difference is the TKIP is an encryption method used by double PA, while the AES is for WPA2. So it is the preferred method because it is far stronger method of encryption. So authentication the enterprise. So we do need this, the app address of radio server, the UDB ports. Okay. 
and the third key so the third key is the password or key between the AP and the user the wireless security so this is the WPA2 enterprise so the encryption is set to AES because it's WPA2 we also need the uh, IP address of free server and the shared secret secret between the access point and the router at the access point or router to uh, the radio server also have the WPA3 Devices that support WPA3 authentication were not readily available. WPA2 is no longer sec considered secure. So it includes four sec features. We have the WPA3 personnel, enterprise, open networks, and IoT onboarding. Check your understanding. Let's check. What are the best ways to secure the WLAN? So we have the authentication and encryption following does not use password shared so have the open authentication so which encryption method is used by the original specification we have the reverse cipher cipher 4 so following encryption method uses ccmp to recognize if the encryption and non-encrypted bits have been altered we have the AES advanced encryption standard yeah this is the following methods has the user enter pre-shared password we have Personal WPA personal and WPA two personal module practice and quiz. So we learn the double LAN uh, the standards, the four main types. We have double pan, man, LAN, and double one. Uh, so discuss the organizations influencing the LAN standards. We have the ITUR, IEEE. And Wi-Fi Alliance. So also this uh, discuss the how devices communicate wirelessly. So they use the wireless NICs. So it incorporates a radio transmitter and receiver. Also discuss the two main wireless topology modes, which is the ad hoc and inf infrastructure mode. Also the tethering, which is a variation of ad hoc mode. The cap of operation, the channel management. The double land threats and how to secure the double land. So, so, in the context of module quiz, so in the context of mobile devices, what does the term tethering involve? So, it's a connection of mobile device to another mobile device. Share a connect network connections. So, which feature of 802.11n wireless access points allow them to transmit data faster than? We have the multiple input and multiple output. So which method of wireless attackers is considered currently considered to be the strongest? We have WPA2. Which parameter is commonly used to identify wireless network name? So we have the SSID. So which characteristics describes a wireless client operating in active mode? So the, wi the wireless client must know the SSID connector and access point. So which operates uh, as work frequency, wireless frequency both 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz ranges. We have 11N. So which statement describes an autonomous access point? So it's a standalone access point. So which two roles are typically performed by wireless router that is used in home or small business? We have the access point and Ethernet switch. So which protocol and port numbers are used by IPv4 and IPv6 cap of tunnels? We use the UDP port and UDP protocol and 5246 and 47 uh, port numbers. So if 311 be access points in the Bitcoin close proximity, which three frequency channels should be used? We have 6 and 11. Channel 1, 6, channel 1, channel 6, and channel 11. So the these frequency bands does not, our frequency channels does not interfere with each other. Switch type of telecommunication technology is used to provide internet internet access to vessels at sea. We have the satellite. 
so which realized the core topology is being configured by the crypto shadow, it's on a keyboard, mouse, using it. This is Bluetooth, we have other code. So it's created into our more VSS, controlled by internet, Ethernet, we have the ESS. So Wi-Fi management frame is regularly broadcast by APs to plan announce the planet presence. We have the beacon. All the current answers. So the next module would be the WLAN configuration. So it contains all the configuration for a wireless local area network. So we will be using a wireless LAN controller here. And we have five uh, packet tracers. That's it.